I'm Robert Scoble, and I'm writing a book on called The Age of Context, which is all about how we're being tracked by sensors, wearable computers, and imagers, and all sorts of fun things. And here I'm studying uh, Immersive, who is making a, a product called Car, who which watches your camera or a camera in a space. What could that do? All sorts of fun things, it turns out. So who are you? I'm Jason Sosa, the founder and CEO of Immersive. A few years ago, I started a music research software company when we were trying to gather data from physical spaces. And I realized how hard it was to do this. And I ended up selling that company off, but later worked on computer vision projects and realized that cameras could be the perfect way to gather continuous real-time data from real-time spaces. And that's where the idea for CAR came. And I, I met you at Techstars in, uh, in uh, Boulder, I think. Techstars. Right? That's right. And you were showing me this uh, sign, basically, that would interact with people as they walked by, right? Yeah. You know, this, this project has probably been in the making for like five years or more. But I, I went and really just started becoming obsessed with this idea that this world is changing into this uh, hybrid reality. We have this digital world and this physical world. And um, I've been trying to do experiments and figure out really what this means and how can we leverage this information and create a smarter world. Well, and now that I'm writing this book, I see just how we're going to be trapped in the world. You have the, tell me what CARA does. So CARA is a new way to measure the world. We basically take any standard web camera and turn it into an intelligent sensor. And the sensor can measure age, gender, attention time, glances, from up to 25 people simultaneously, up to 25 feet away. And so, uh, so you're, you're using it on this uh, camera built into this MacBook uh, Pro, right? That's right, just built in right into it. It's using a standard um, uh, embedded web camera. It's a 640 by 480 resolution. And uh, point it at me and see what it learns about me. And, and so it figured out I'm an adult. What, what does the blue color mean? So the blue color means that you're male. Oh, so and it knows I'm a guy. It knows your guy. For me, that's not too hard to figure out. <laughs> but for your software, it probably was actually a lot of really hard to figure It's out. actually incredibly difficult to do this because you have different types of faces. You have uh, beards, glasses, scarves, hats. There's so many different things in the real world that can really impact this. And to really train a computer to do this was, was quite a feat. Quite a now, the fact that you call me adult means it knows my age range as well, right? Right. So there's four categories. So, so if you have my young kids here, it'll put them. What, what would it, if, if we have my young kids here, what would it say on the screen for them? Uh, so there's, yeah, the four categories are a child, young adult, adult, and senior. And we did those four categories because your face really doesn't change that much except for these you know, pretty major points of, along the way. So, um, so for young kids um, under 12, it probably classified them as children. So where, where is this going to be used? Because I can imagine a retail store would love this, a museum would love this. Where, where do you think, or maybe even a police, you know, I, I mean, uh, the, the San Francisco Giants, are they going to put this at the entrance? Because opening day today, we saw a lot of people. Are they going to watch everybody walk by this and categorize it? their audience in a new way? Well, one thing I really want to make and stress on is that CARA is not face recognition. It's face detection. There's a very big difference. So we don't uh, collect any personal information. There's no images that are saved, recorded, or stored. And it is all created with privacy by design principles. So we, we purposely decided not to be a security company. Our intent is to make this a tool to enable a smarter world. And this is for enterprise customers that want to put this either in a retail setting to measure spaces, uh, again, anonymously. Or if uh, you're in a trade show and you want to measure how long somebody was at your booth. It's something for, for both sides. So let, let's say, because uh, I, I got a tour around the museum in uh, Washington, D.C. And he talked about dwell time in different rooms. And he knew the dwell time at the 9-11 uh, exhibit was about 45 minutes, which he said was extraordinarily long. He measured it just by having somebody watch people going through the space. But he could use your software and a, a, a very low-cost webcam on each space and, and do the same thing, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so it's, it's really a tool to uh, enable real-time continuous data in spaces. But not just gather the data, actually make the data be able to react. So a, a couple of examples, we can actually change uh, advertising content based on who happens to be in the room. So if you're a young female, you're going to get a different message or maybe a different experience than if you're a senior male. And this enables a whole new uh, internet of things possibility with this type of technology. And we see uh, places like Las Vegas do this with signage. You know, you're going through the airport, there's a big, huge LED sign there. 
and they actually have humans who are watching you and talk with you, right? But it's worth spending that kind of money because if they get you to go to uh, one of the wind towers and spend a thousand dollars, that that pays off right there. Right? You know that investment. Yeah, they're going to use technologies like this to augment the the advertising. You think? Absolutely. So like right now, retail has been there's a lot of talk about showroom in retail, and a lot of e-commerce has been affecting this. So retail is, is really has to, uh, it's at a turning point. It has to become more like an experience. Retail should be theater. And this enables completely brand new ways to make retail an experience. The same reason you go into a movie theater as opposed to buying a, a dollar movie from Redbox, right? So there are reasons to create an experience for people, and this enables them to become a part of it. So let's say Wynn wants to buy this for the retail side of the, uh, at the Las Vegas airport. How much does it cost, and how do you get paid? Yeah, so uh, CAR is a uh, pay-as-you-go, month-to-month service. It's $39.95 per month per camera. So you can set this up. You can gather data for just a short time. You can gather data continuously. You can tag your cameras, so you can specify location, uh, placement, and we enable uh, dashboards and analytics so you can actually see this uh, come back in real time. So right now it says it's built on screen, but it actually is sending a little bit of data over over to your computers, right? Yep, yeah, so since we don't uh, transfer any videos or anything like that, it's all done locally and it's all privacy by design. So what you're getting back is just very, very small bits of data and it's not gonna clog bandwidth and um, you're able to see this come in continuously. The XY position, distance, the uh, gender age from... Oh, so it knows how far away I am from the camera? Yes. So there's a few different categories of data. You have demographic data. Okay. You have like, gender age and those kinds of things. Then you have engagement data, the attention time, the, the dwell time, glances. And then you have watcher attributes. These are the XY position of the face, the distance of the face, the width and height of the image of the face. And these enable augmented reality. And that's why I really want to stress this is not just collecting data, but it's enabling new methods of interaction. We're creating a way for computers to now know who's there in front of them so that they can respond. It's almost like creating a synthetic empathy for these machines. If I had this at the front of, a, let's say, a movie theater with 300 people in it, you said you can only see 25 faces at one time, or you can only yeah. deal with that amount yeah. of yeah. It's really not a limitation of the algorithms. It's more that you can only fit physically 25 people in front of a 70 degree field of view for the camera. So with you know additional cameras with maybe wider uh, field of views, we could probably do some additional things. Okay. Yeah. Uh, wow. And what does this data look like to a developer? Is it just a stream like a Twitter stream coming in? Yeah. Uh, should I go ahead and log in and show you? Uh, if you could, sure. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, and. Where 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 do you where else do you expect to see this data being used? To, you know, because this is pretty interesting stuff. Um, so it's, it can be used a lot in retail settings. That's where we see it initially. But yeah. where we're going with it next is actually being able to use this on mobile devices, using it on tablets. Yeah, you showed me it running on a, a Samsung. You, we can't yeah. our cameras can't see it. Oh, yeah. But it works. It, it just like it does work, work. exactly. So let me go. So you could just be walking down the street and categorizing everybody on the street, almost like a, a survey taker. You know, is writing down, okay, there's a guy, there's a girl, you know, here's some kids, and they can be tracking the traffic. You could be doing that with a mobile phone. Well, we're thinking that this could be really useful for smart cities. This could be used for um, app analytics. This could be used for a number of different things. So it's really like this is kind of a new concept. So people are familiar with social and geo and mobile data. But this is, you know, the kind of untapped, um, you know, uncharted waters of real-world information, and because there are so many privacy concerns with it, a lot of people kind of stay back. We think we've really cracked that, and so now it's just a matter of how do we introduce a new way to measure the world of people and you know, let them be exposed to what this can actually do. Let's be honest. Somebody is going to do face detection, face recognition. You're doing face detection, right? Face recognition is already, you know, there's Israeli companies that sold to Facebook called yeah. Face.com. Now Facebook has shut them down, but let's be honest, somebody's going to do it, you know, because well, it's it's going to be done. If yeah. it can be done, it's going to be done. Well, there are some uh, some pretty good limitations right now. At the moment, um, you're talking a huge number of people, right? You have to then store that information locally to do all the computation to do that. It's not something that could be very feasible, at least with you know today's computers, right? It's something that you have as a cloud service. 
Um, we really see this as not a way to be big brother, not a way to be invasive. invasive. We see this as a tool to create a smart world. And we've actually built a whole ethics statement around this. And we you know, really believe in this. We, we follow ourselves. So we ask our developers to do the same. Very cool. So let's see what, you, what, what it looks like when you're logged in. OK, so this is all the data that we're collecting. You can see, uh, just like you would with Google Analytics or any other dashboard, you have all these stats. But these are real world impressions. So I have uh, over 3,000 impressions, an average attention time, and then you can see the, uh, you know, the ebbs and flows of the traffic throughout the day. And of course, we have you know, the best popular hours and the top locations. So if I wanted to, say, compare a cash register, and here that comes up. So here's my data from this cash register. Yeah. But then I want to compare it to an end cap. Uh, an end cap is the thing you find in a grocery store. You know, at the very end, the people, you know, companies pay a lot of money to put their yeah. products there. So you can actually see the differences between the two. Um, and how many cameras can be hooked up to one computer, by the way? At the moment, it's one camera per one computer. Yeah. yeah. So you can buy low, low cost cameras that are computers, though. You know, we're seeing uh, computers under $100 now, so in some cases. Right? Yeah. The, the minimum spec is uh, an Intel uh, dual core Atom processor. So you can probably pick it up for 150 bucks. So it's pretty cheap. Yeah. And does it run on Windows and Macintosh? Or what OS does, it, does your software need to, to run on? Um, at the moment, it's Windows. Uh, Linux is coming shortly. And then Macintosh should be in the next couple months. Okay. So we'll, we'll be on all, all three major platforms. So low cost Windows box would do this just fine. Yeah. You don't need a really high end supercomputer to, to do this. Exactly. So you can set this up with a $150 computer, a $30 Logitech camera, and you're all set to go. So in a retail store, you probably want uh, 10 to 20 of these things, so that gives you an idea of how much it would be to do this through one store and be able to track at all times and do a lot of shopping analytics. Yeah, absolutely, and it's, it's a lot more scalable than having you know, 20, 30 people there with a clipboard counting and doing those kinds of things. And it's not a snapshot of time, it's a continuous movie picture. So yeah. that's how it's you know, really different. Well, you can see how this will be useful because uh, like a beer vendor might want to know who's being attracted to their end cap you know, gender-wise and uh, uh, yeah, gender-wise and uh, age-wise and all that stuff. And do they actually uh, do something? I, can you figure out that they actually bought a case of beer through this? Or? Well, the, the thing with car is because we don't do any kind of identification. If you you have an ID when you're in the scene, just to differentiate you from the other people in the scene. But as soon as you leave and come back, you're a totally new ID. So it's not going to be able to recognize that you came in and then you came back or, or anything like that. So we're not doing any kind of tracking per se. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. Well, what else do we need to so, know? So here, here are all the stats that come back. And you can see just like um, we would for the web, here's a grocery store end cap in Los Angeles, California, where the young adult male was there for nine seconds. And so these are all real-time stats coming back, and they're all anonymized. And for the most part, brands just really want to know this kind of data anyway. They don't need to know you know, Robert or Jason. They just need to know this yeah. you know, generic data. For gathering all the cameras and managing that, that can be a challenge. Um, and so you're able to actually uh, filter your locations by geographic region. Um, I can pause them if I only want to use it for a short time, yeah. keep all my data. And then creating a camera is super easy. You just type in what's being measured, the purpose of it, and you just put location tags. And then you just link this up on the back end with Car Desktop, and it's set to go. How do, you, how do your algorithms actually work? How do you know that uh, it's a senior walking into this scene? How, how, how much work do you have to do, and how, how does that work? Yeah, so it's, it's not as easy as it sounds. It's, it's actually it's a lot of work to get a computer to uh, do this type of pattern matching or machine learning. So, um, there are a lot of different types of faces, a lot of different ethnicities, a lot of different scenarios that come forward. So we basically had an army of people that would tag images. And it took us a long time, and we basically trained it on different age groups, on different um, environments, and different lighting conditions, and we built our data set entirely from scratch, which was the biggest challenge in actually building the system. So um, in doing that, we're able to now make this functional in real-time streaming video, um, using a web camera. Where, where do you think this kind of technology is going in the future? Right? And I, I'm sure you're working on making that age more granular so you, you can tell exactly what age that person is, but where do you think this is going? So uh, I think probably in the next uh, couple years, we'll, we'll definitely be able to get this to a plus or minus five years for an individual. Um, and then something that's probably a bit more interesting is the ability to recognize multiple emotions. 
whether the person is surprised, confused, um, smiling, uh, or just a neutral expression, and, and then enabling computers to actually understand the emotional sentiment of the people that are using them. So that could then cause uh, either games or um, learning software for education. Um, it could enable uh, pain detection for patients. So we're thinking really broad with this because this is so new. And we do see this as a way to make a smarter world. Wow. You can think of how Disney might use this at Walt Disney World or whatnot, put thousands of cameras and be tracking the emotional state of people right. and see if they can affect the emotional state by doing, you know, by putting some music there or putting a, a performance there or, or even uh, working with staff to uh, you know, tell some jokes or something in mind, see if it affects the emotional state of people over time. Yeah, and the, the great thing about it is it's, it's totally passive. So you're not asking people to come in for a survey panel. They're not having to change their behavior to answer questions. They just do what they do. And with that information, it's, it's, it's even that much more valuable because it's, it's totally passive. Well, it, it's very, very shocking. <laughs> how are you guys funded? And how to, uh, tell me about your company a little bit. Yeah, so we were uh, part of the Techstars uh, 2011 New York class, the first class. Um, we raised um, over $2 million uh, from investors like Dave McClure and Sammy Hagen and uh, Tiddy Ventures and others. And uh, we are you know, growing, so we have an office in Singapore. So we just opened that office, and we have a few employees there, uh, some employees in New York, and we're getting ready to release this to the world. So. Very cool, where do we learn more about it? Uh, you can go to immersivelabs.com, which is what we were formerly called. Or, uh, it's spelled weird, is it? Well, we are actually, we changed our name, so uh, we dropped a few bottles. It's imrsv.com. Very cool, thank you so much sure. for coming and showing us today. It's really awesome. Thank you.